Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day, and now it's time for the candidates. This time around, we're heading to the Bono region, precisely the Sunyang West uh, constituency, where we'll be speaking to the youngest ever parliamentary candidate in money from that constituency. And hopefully, uh, it looks as if she would be one of the youngest if she should win to go into parliament from that constituency. And so uh, let's see how that goes. But of course, take a look at her profile. We'll be speaking to Millicent Amankwa Yabua. Just take a look at her profile. She's joined me in the studios. We'll have a conversation about her constituency. Millicent Yabua Amankwa was born on July 22nd, 1992 at Odumase in the Bunu region. She's a proud alumna of the Notre Dame School at Fiapre, an electoral area considered a stronghold of the NPP. She holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science and Economics from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. She was elected to serve as the SRC Women's Commissioner of the University. She was a strong member of the Tertiary Education Institution Network of the NDC. Millicent is arguably the youngest person ever to declare her interest to represent the constituents of Sunyai West in Parliament. The affable 28-year-old politician won a landslide victory in the NDC's parliamentary primaries to pick Sunyai West slot for the 2020 general elections. She contested against Justice Samuel J, the NDC parliamentary candidate in the 2016 elections and a former deputy regional minister and another aspirant. Millicent Yeboa Mankwa has tested the world of work and brings on board some considerable level of proactiveness, experience, skills and knowledge of leadership. From a branch manager to working as a social welfare officer in charge of juvenile cases and child custody at the Domestic Violence and Victim Support Unit of the Ghana Police Service. Even though Sunyai West is considered a safe seat for the NPP, she is confident of unseating the incumbent MP and Minister for Employment and Labour Relations, Ignatius Bafwe Wa, in the December polls. Well, it's going to be an interesting one to watch. Is it going to be possible to unseat the incumbent who's been at post since 2008? He's literally gone through the ranks and currently he is the employment minister. He's seeking another term in that constituency. But the NDC is quite sure that this time around uh, they will take the seat from Honorable Ignatius Bafour uh, Ewa. And so Millicent Amankwai Ewa joins us. Good morning. How yeah. are you? My God's grace, I'm fine. Congrats on the primaries, by the way. I'm just curious. I mean, you were born in, you schooled in an NPP stronghold from, of course, all the details that we have. How did NDC come about then? Okay, thank you so much. First of all, um, thank you for the opportunity given to me. And I would say a very good morning to all your viewers. Then greet the people of Bono. Mm. The people of Bono. Then Sunyani West constituency the Buno Regional Executives, constituency executives, the entire people, the Nananum of Sinyani West, the Imams and the pastors who have guided me throughout this journey. Mm. Yes, it's so surprising that um, probably I am coming from or I hail from a community that is full of the MPP or MPP has majority over mm. there. Oh, for years, MPP have been winning as, as a young person I still insisted to contest on the ticket of the NDC. It's always about the work. Okay. It's even in the Bible said, you shall judge them by their fruits. Mm. So I cannot contest on the ticket of any political party. As young as I am, I cannot defend. There is nothing there I can speak about. So I just decided to contest on the ticket of the NDC because the motive and the philosophy of the NDC to support the needy, mm. that's what I stand for, and that's exactly what I would do. To so support that, the needy? Yes. Okay, give me more details, because again, you have said that you cannot defend the NPP or any other party apart from the NDC, and you're yeah. saying it's because of their support for the needy? Yeah. Explain further what that means. Okay, thank you so much. Um, in life, as we are all joining the political party, what the government stands for is to provide for the people. Mm in the country and in, if I'm contesting on the ticket or if I'm there to support the people of Sinyane West, if everybody has or everything is provided for everyone, I think that there will not be any need for anything. 
what we would have to do is to just supervise. Okay. But now we are there to support, to voice out the need of the people of Sunyani West. And so if they are in need of something, and that's what the NDC philosophy stands for, mm. that is supporting the needy ones, then I believe that I need to contest because I have the passion okay. to run an NGO. Okay. And very supportive when I was in school too as well. I was working with Vena Mineral Water and they had Changing Life okay. Foundation that they used to support the needy as well. But so, running an NGO is not like politics. Exactly, but the maximum priority is to care for the needy. NDC has had the longest reign in the country. If we're talking about the needy, there must be a reason why they voted the NDC, or Ghanaians voted the NDC out of power in 2016. And also back in um, you know, 2000, up until 2008, the NPP was in power. If really the NDC was concerned and was um, you know, ensuring that the needy ones get what they require, I don't think that they would have been voted out of power. That's, that's very true. But you see something, when you are inside the box, it feels like you are doing what you want to do. But the people, other political parties will come and deceive the people to tell you, hey, what these people are doing is not the best. So let's give the change. Sometimes God gives ways to let such people stay aside for other people who think they can do it, to come and do it. It wasn't necessary that the MPP didn't work, mm. but other people's voice was so loud to the stand that all the things that the NDC was doing, they think that it shouldn't be appreciated because they can do much more. And what are they doing today? What are some of the things that NDC did that you think stood out for you? One, during our period, even in school, we saw how the school feeding was working. Did it not work under the MPP? Mm -mm. Not, not at all. We saw when farmers, NDC was in power, mm -hmm. how farmers, crops and other things were moving on because of the farm inputs the NDC were assisting them. Is the there fertilizers... more support for farmers under the NPP than the NDC ever did? No. Okay. No. Because even for the past four years, during the time NDC was in power, you heard a lot about cashew. Mm -hmm. You heard a lot about cocoa. Now I am coming from a community, the majority of the work being done there is agri. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of people, the past four years ago, there was so much in a haste. Everybody wanted to turn it, you know, agriculture into just cashew because they saw how much they, they were earning. But now nobody wants mm -hmm. to do it anymore because the price has just dropped. That is why I always believe in the NDC that His Excellency John Dramani mm. Mahama has come out with a manifesto that God willing, how when the um, NDC was in power or generally how they provide things for the cocoa people, mm -hmm. that's exactly how the pricing system is going to be for cashew as well because we knew how much cashew was developing and how people were so much excited. But, but it's not just about, you know, going into a Greek and producing the crops and all of that. It's also about processing. The NPP says they had introduced one district, one factory, uh, given opportunity for these farmers to get the chance to process their uh, produce as well. Is that not another way of supporting the agricultural sector? You know, I don't really want to go there because that's not what, that's what they said, but that's not what they've implemented. In my constituency where I stand, mm -hmm. or I'm contesting... We've not seen anything like that there. So There's how, not a single factory? Not at all. In the entire constituency? Not at all. Not at all. There hasn't been any form of support for farmers? Not at all. We even have the Minister for Employment. We have nothing like that. Planting for food and jobs, it hasn't impacted your constituency in any way? My sister, I won't have been here for the public to be seated here to be talking about this. I don't want to talk about it because all what they said was lies. What did they say exactly? That you, you one district, one factory. Is a lie? It's a lie. Okay. Show me one in my constituency. Well, I do, I'm not from your constituency. Exactly. So I, that's, that's what I'm asking so, you. But yes. that's not the only thing that they, they touched on. I mean, that's why I'm asking for other details as well. You're saying that for the past four years that the MPP has been in power, you have not benefited in not terms of agriculture in your not constituency. Yes. Let's hear from the constituents. Let's see what they have to say about the reign of Honorable Ignatius Balfour, who asked their MP since 2008, and what really their challenges are. 2020, let's say, Sunyana West. If they talk about Obama, anything Nina, Obama, the SF to Obama, and it's a 12 years, and you're going to go to Sunyana West. 
Timofia played the man to my MPR. He couldn't need your choice. Man to man. Fear prayer how? And see, I hear press here to buy for me. I now say many cents. I'm running. Who say you have caught my hair? You show me a tie, ha? And you should get one. You show me for your day. You now go sit here. Buy for me about twelve good years. Fear prayer. You move beer. We buy it. Buy for me. I feel I'm sorry. My bill is sent to be out to Omra. Before we are back from a fear prestation, when the bay area, any fear pre market, we say the hospital, any school dying, and think before we are back, a bell boy, a better woman, I'm an assigned but two of years time, or best I am pun to Duma, am I ever fear pre groom tea paper before we are. Best one above before we are. Oh, let me be twelve years. The paper do good at the cheap beauty. Yes, <laughs> Before we are by ya, we must say this watch about our young people. We are going to do what we are going to do. We And those are some comments from constituents in the Sunyang West constituency in the Bono region. And we have the NDC parliamentary candidate in the studio with us. Um, so far, when it comes to Greg, she says that the NPP, um, you know, told lies in terms of what they intended to do for farmers, especially in that community, because she hasn't seen any form of uh, development when it comes to that sector. But let's continue. She's Millicent Amankwa by the way, and she's 28 years. Uh, interesting. Uh, she'll be one of the 16 fresh faces from the NDC that will be contesting, uh, well, 16 fresh female faces uh, in the NDC that will be contesting the December elections. And let's see, she'll be able to knock out an incumbent, and he's the Minister of Employment, uh, Anabo Ignatius Bafo Ewa. But now let's talk about other things as well, because, I mean, I want to understand, like you said, you have a knack for helping the needy and that is why you decided to go into politics but what really is the major challenge in your constituency that pushed you to run okay one first of all i am coming from let's say the municipal capital and since growing up mm -hmm. we have not really seen any change in that community since growing up yes you're 28 years so you're saying that for the last 28 years you haven't seen any change that means that the NDC and the MPP all together have not done much for your constituency? I'm talking about, I am here as a member of parliament mm. candidate. Mm -hmm. So that is why I'm saying that he has not done anything. When you say he, are you talking about the incumbent? The MPP has been in power mm. for, since 1996. No, I know, mm. I understand. But the mm. NDC has also been in power presidential elections. Of course, they've also won. We've not won the seat before. And does that stop the NDC from bringing about development? The NDC the has been the hallmark of development when it comes to Sunyani West. That is why earlier on I said that I cannot come here or context on a ticket of any political party than the NDC. Because we had ministers during the NDC time, but we had never had the experience of becoming an MP or NDC having any slot of a candidate becoming an MP. That is why I'm saying that. And the current MP has been there for 12 good years, has done nothing to boast of. Nothing? Nothing to boast he of. He hasn't think, you know, um, you know, of course, he represents the constituency in yes. Parliament. He's supposed to ensure that policies favour uh, the people of your constituency. He hasn't done any of that? He hasn't done anything. So why, why do they keep voting him into power then? You see, that's why earlier on said the perception within the community is I mean, a traditional seat for the MPP, which I don't believe in that thing. I believe that any member of Parliament or any person elected as a leader in every office should add up. Mm -hmm. There is always more room for improvement. And so it's, if because you've taken the opportunity or you are relying on the favor seat of becoming an MP from the ticket of MPP and you are still there, people, now people have changed their mind. Mm. Now people are having discernment in politics, not at first. 
That is why the place is so hot as of now. Mm. He doesn't feel it as previously how he felt. He had it easy, but this time he's not going to get it easy. Because you are taking the seat. I am winning by God's grace. Winning the seat for the NDC. Mm. Because we need to change it. Because you see, all things like roads, market centers, their backgrounds, mm -hmm. and electricity, all, were, all these things were done by the NDC. All were done by the NDC. All were done by the NDC. Only when they were in power. Even the MP's hometown. Mm. Can, he cannot boast of anything. When you even come to, you know, the most surprising aspects in life is when we are talking about these are Greek, it is because we need to factor in roads mm -hmm. because it facilitates for education, it facilitates for health and all other things involved. We have so bad roads. You tried fixing one of the roads. What happened? Hmm. <laughs> You see, I went to, during my primaries, I went to the chiefs to ask um, for prayers, and I needed to meet my delegates. Mm -hmm. And when I went to them, they were surprised because they thought that when you are first elected on the political party lead, um, take it, that's when you can come officially. Mm -hmm. I told them that I'm coming from a home of royal within the community, and I can't pass by, can't just bypass, bypass yeah. um, any traditional institution and just go and just meet my people. And they really appreciated the respect I gave to them. So after, I used a road in Sunyani West, the hometown of the, the... The incumbent? Yes. Okay. The road was so bad. If I'm using that road like three times, mm -hmm. and I'm feeling so much pain within, how much more someone who is always using the road 24 seven, goes and come back as a cocoa road, is a road majority of people within the community used. So you can't just watch the road to just be destroyed like that. So I went to the chief that I have not been elected as a member of parliament, but I believe that um, the lives of the people are very important. So if you give me the opportunity, mm. I would go and reshape the road so that we can have easy access. And because I don't want us to get to the point we are now coming to vote or after we hear any bad news. As soon as the machine, the nananum, gave us the opportunity for libation, the machine started moving, doing its work. Mm. We saw another machine came to cross our machine. Okay. And we asked, they said, the MP said, he's the one doing the road. And the people, the indigents, the people within the community also went to stand in front of his machine. That if you, would, if you really had wanted to fix it, would have fixed it long ago. Not this time God has given us this young woman to come and help us. This is the same time we want to come and distract her. Mm. In fact, it became a lot of issues. And in fact, we didn't go there to destroy the community. And conflict resolution, if two groups have misunderstanding, one has to leave the scene. Yeah. So he feels like he's in power. We are not in power, so we don't really have a lot of you know, power within mm. us to go ahead to, with whatever we initiate. So, so basically, halted, we need to... He halted uh, that... De de developments on that Redor, uh, road. What's yes. the current state of that road? Has he completed it now? He didn't. Three people have died on the road, including my zonal secretary, on our way coming back from campaign. Wow. Which is so bad. Mm. We lost a woman, my colleague woman, that's my pain. Mm. My colleague woman as well. So the things that happen on the road really hits me because I had the intention of, you know, I had the intention of going to reshaping because I could I assume what could happen. How but are you funding the, the, the road, the construction of the road? It is by the support of the party. The party And some support you. of NGOs. Who if you should go into par uh, parliament eventually, what's that one law that you'd really push for? Oh, I would push for the affirmative action bill. Okay, why that? The MPP says they're going to pass it anyway. If they would have passed it, it's four years now. Mm. When they came in, they had done everything, thanks to our former minister. Mm -hmm. for you say everything. What exactly is everything that they had done? They presented to parliament and gathered every detail they think was enough. They came in power because of change of government. Once to withdraw it, so they said they have to make some amendments. Mm -hmm. As of now, when are you going to? When are you going to implement? And you don't it? think that the women's caucus in parliament has really pushed for it to? you know, be passed into law? That is why I am coming on board as well, because the number 
of women representation in parliament is not is something we can really go home like talk How about. How do we increase the representation really? Because much more women involvement in politics, mm. giving us women also the privilege and women also believing that we can also add up to mm. take decisions. Because we could realize that um, women engagement hasn't been something to talk about, mm. but then gradually we could see that it is growing up. Okay, okay. Um, eventually, because even when you see the, um, the presidential candidates, you could see that we have about three women mm. contesting and- Yes, we do have three presidential yeah, candidates. Exactly, mm. and when you come to the NDC, which we really believe in, and this time around, our president, His Excellency, the incoming mm. president of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama Otto, brought a woman as, a, uh, as his vice okay. or the running mate. Okay. So gradually, myself is a more motivating for women in climbing up. So w would love to see your face. And then while she take your nose mask off, I just really want to ask you, what do you think your chances are, especially because, of course, in the Sunyan West constituency, there's this issue between or amongst the NPP members. We have an independent candidate who defected from the party, now says that he wants to go independent. And that could or could not split the votes. We don't know. What do you think your chances are? Okay. I think that if by God's grace, um, that's one thing I always believe. If by God's grace you are going to win the seat, God facilitates everything. I don't believe that um, the independent candidate will or not decide mm. for the NDC faith in Sunyani West of winning the elections because it clearly shows that there are so much of power struggle in MPP. All what they know is just about their selves. Selfish, you know, one thing is when you go around campaigning as a young person, people say, oh, you are there because of your personal interests. It's only the, the people around you. Are you not? Not, not, not about anybody's, really, and you know, and the MPP depicts exactly what they see. Because you could see the ruling government. You're saying they're selfish? The ruling government. You see, when I said earlier on that, the people are always saying that we are coming because of our interests, we're just bringing our family and other things. But you could see the ruling government and its family and friends appointment. It's exactly what people get furious about. And so in, in Sunyani West now, their power struggle, it doesn't take anything and okay. add anything to Sunyani because we are going to work effectively and make sure that the voice of the people within Sunyani West is being heard. Right. Enough is enough. That's 2020. We'll bring it back another time, hopefully on Woman Factor, so we can get some more details from her about, you know, her, what she thinks about women in, in politics and all of that. Unfortunately, we'll have to wrap up at this point, but thank you so much. Uh, Millicent Amankwa Yabwa, she's a 28-year-old NDC parliamentary candidate that's hoping to unseat Honorable Ignatius Bafo Iwa, who is the Employment Minister and the incumbent MP in that area, and he represents the NPP. How possible or likely is that? 33 days to the general elections. Have you decided yet? Keep watching. This is still TV3 Media.